What's up, Jonathan? How's Dude, it going? It's going good, brother. Good. Good to be in your office today. Thanks for yeah, having me here. Absolutely. Welcome to the studio. Yeah, I like it. So you can see that there's a nice pretty background here, which is set just for podcasts. We have our computers here in case we need them, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. This is all behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Um, Jonathan is um, a content guru. He has been in the content business for over a decade now and is the market leader with Movement Mortgage, but teaches real estate agents and coaches um, people and agents on social media and how content is king. And I figure, why don't I just let you tell a little bit about yourself instead of uh, me? Jonathan's awesome, so I can brag about that, but sure. you know, right out of, the, right out of Jonathan's mouth. Yeah, so, um, so I got into the mortgage industry back in 2003 and was there through kind of the downturn, worked for an incredible company. Uh, their assets were acquired by Countrywide, decided that wasn't the right fit for me. Couldn't find a company with the same culture, the same um, just everything and um, got out of it. Got into commercial insurance and worked for uh, one of the, se the seven largest brokerages in the world, was a commercial insurance producer, did that for about five to seven years and did not enjoy managing people's risk, but I was good at it because I knew how to connect with people. I knew how to create content and to be in front of people and how to get their attention and build influence with them, but I, I hated actually what I was doing. So I hired my first coach in 2013 and um, fell in love with what they were doing for me and wanted to do that for other people. So got my real estate license, um, started running online masterminds, and coaching insurance agents and mortgage bankers on how to create powerful relationships with real estate agents, like how to make a difference in their life, not just their business, but their life, um, so that they, uh, their, their lives move forward together. And uh, came across movement during that time, followed movement for about two years. They weren't in this area, Southwest Florida, um, but I hounded Toby and Casey, the two co-founders, and said, hey, if you guys ever want to expand into Southwest Florida, I want in. I, the, the real estate market is craving what you guys do. They're craving the way you serve your realtor partners and the way you love um, the people in your organization. And so uh, almost three years ago now, we've been in this market two and a half years, uh, going gangbusters. And um, I, I really feel like I have a team of people that every day wake up and ask themselves, how can I go make a difference for somebody? Yeah. And that to me is like, a, is a, that's incredible. And one of the awesome things and the reason why you're on here is because the content that you lead your team to put out and you put out yourself is content that people want to see. It's real stuff and Jonathan knows how to do that. One thing you don't know about Jonathan, one thing you don't know from watching this is that he's much taller than I am. And I'm six foot. How tall are you? Uh, six three. So if you if you if you can't notice, your I'm, chair's a little higher. Is that the deal? <laughs> no, I keep trying to do this. Can I make my chair higher? You probably because, can. Yep. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> yes. I feel a little bit better now about myself. So, great. So, uh, Jonathan, tell us uh, a little bit about you know content, how you teach content, and how you do it, and how it's going to dominate in. 2019 like it hasn't been already right yeah so everything is moving towards content content creation people uh, for years have wanted to generate leads mm -hmm. right so and what do you mean by content let's let's start off with the basics so for people okay, that don't so know. we'll define content content is um, for me it's providing value to the marketplace providing value to someone content um, most people think a canned email is content. They think, hey, um, at your Super Bowl party, right? Every realtors want to send out these, e like they get the canned emails. Yeah. Hey, Super Bowl appetizer for this yeah. weekend, right? They think that is content. And uh, what I try to it stress is. is. It's just bad content. Correct, yeah. It's not the, it's not the way that I define content. So mm -hmm. content for me is um it's, it's what can you bring to the marketplace that adds value, that connects you, that... So I'll give you an example. Someone, realtors ask all the time, well, like, how do I come up with this content? And I had a real estate agent uh, call me up one day, a buddy of mine, and he was just venting. He was venting about a listing agent and how this listing agent wouldn't, you know, was on vacation. He had made an offer. There was just all of this stuff, and he went on for, like, 10 minutes. And I said, dude, like, shut up. Like, I don't want to hear this. Like, yeah. like he, he wasn't throwing the agent under the bus, but he was just... He was 
talking about the situation he was in and why it's so important to hire a full-time aide. And I was like, this is great content. Like, yeah. this is what you want to share with the marketplace. Uh, another agent came, was talking about season, saying, you know, there's really no more season down here in Southwest Florida. Like, my business didn't slow down. And I said, look, that's content. Yeah, exactly. Like, if I'm, if, if my, if I'm waiting, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a, someone looking to sell my home and I'm waiting until season to sell my home, and I come across this piece of content that's saying there is no more season, here's why you want to get your home. That's going to get my attention. Mm -hmm. That's content. And that's, so that's what someone is experiencing every day. That's your content. Yep. Like so what you do on a daily basis. So the content that we're talking about is uh, email, social media, anything that's between you and your ideal customer. And with that, it's all, it all has to be relevant. It sounds like what you're saying and is, is aligns with the way that I teach this stuff is relevancy and value added. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the first things that- And entertaining. Oh, it's gotta be entertaining, yeah. yeah. Entertaining, educate, entertain, and inform. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be long either. Right. So um, give me an example of, I know that you had um, those other two examples. Give me an example about something that kind of comes up for you and you're like, you know what? I just need to share this with people. Um, so a lot of times I invest a lot in myself. I have a coach. I do a lot of reading. So this is one thing, uh, one of the things I would used to do. So I have a database and I would send drip emails and campaigns. But whenever I would have an aha about my coaching or whenever my coach would give me an aha, mm -hmm. I would want to share that. Yeah. So when I would share that with, so I would just type up, a, hey, I went through this, this happened to me, kind of showed a little bit of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would send that type of an email to my database, the engagement, the replies um, were overwhelming. Yeah. So what it started showing me is people want authenticity. They crave vulnerability. And when you can connect with your audience in that way, that's going to absolutely allow you because that's what content part of what it does is you want to build influence with someone mm -hmm. content allows you to build influence with someone as long as it's those three things that you said right uh, informative Educate. educational and entertaining exactly yeah um, and it's it's so much easier than hey, I feel like I'm scratching your table with my mm, you're good. with my bracelet I'm sure, my, I'm sure this is coated with a very good protective reminder for me to hit the gym work oh, out like good. good. Yeah, do my best. Um, but yeah, content is, it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be a lot, but it has to be real and authentic. I'll tell you, some of my most uh, valuable pieces that were most watched is when we had a struggle in our family, which was earlier this year, and well, no, last year now, but um, I'm pretty sure you know about that. That's when my wife and kids, they had to go to Wisconsin for mm -hmm. three months, and I went through a lot of, and so did Jessica, my wife, we went through a lot of, Jesus, like soul searching, identification, discovering of ourselves, because we were going through a big problem and we were apart for a big, you know, yeah. uh, for, for a big time frame of that. So, um, so I would start putting out some videos which were extremely vulnerable, but they were just, they were just me. And I can't even say that those were very entertaining, but people wanted to watch them because yeah, but, I was being real and authentic. Right, and but prior to that, you know, there could have been people out there that all they know of is, hey, this guy does over 100 transactions annually. He's this yeah. real estate machine. What you did was you started to connect with them on a different level, mm -hmm. right? On a level to where people will fight for you. Like when you connect with someone that way, no, no, no. They won't just refer you. You got to use Jay. Jay's, Jay's an incredible dude. Here's some of the, like, you know, and they start telling your story to mm -hmm. other people. So I absolutely think that's, that was huge. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. My wife is great. She's at that. she does a really good job. She's she's great on social media. She's great at sharing the stories. Yeah, I, I you know I wish I could be as good of a storyteller as her, and you. Well, <laughs> that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, exactly. So um, so talk about building influence and um, and people trusting you and how you've uh, how you've grown in that way and. And just a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, as, I, as, I, as I began to craft my content, one of the things people sometimes think is the more intentional you get with your content, the less authentic it can be because mm -hmm. you're planning it out. And so what I tell people is that's not really true. Like you can be very intentional with your social media presence with the content you create, but it's still authentic because it's you and it's real and it's relevant. But content 
Authentic content builds influence. And when you begin to build influence with someone, you begin to build trust with them. You develop a friendship, and um, it, it's, a, it's a connection on a different level. Most real estate agents, mortgage bankers, they don't know how to connect with someone on that level. All they know how to do is um, call a lead, and if nothing happens, you know, it's a done lead. And I think as far as content, most people, um, where a lot of real estate agents see a lot of success is the lead, right? That lead is gonna need to be nurtured. That lead that you generate, anybody can generate leads, like you're, you're a master at that. Generating leads is not hard, it's cultivating the leads. And so with your content, your content allows you to begin to build influence with all of those leads that you generated. So you start building this database of people that where you couldn't bring that lead to the surface, but if you start dripping your content on them, creating that content, you're gonna have that database and you still have the social media um, avenue going, uh, you're gonna start to see that database reaching out, contacting you and wanting to do business with you. Yeah, yeah, we experienced the same thing when we started in my real estate business, when we started a couple years ago, putting out weekly newsletters. So talk about, talk about value. I mean, and when you were <clears throat> saying that realtor who was venting and telling you about the issues that they had with that other real estate agent they were dealing with and why it's so important to, to why it's so important to interview agents and know what the hell you're doing. Absolutely. I did the same thing and that was one of the most watched videos that I had. So what I did after that was I identified the biggest frustrations or problems or things that people would Google. Right. In, in real estate, yeah. you know, like, um, oh, and in our specific area. So in Southwest Florida, you know, Airbnbs, right. Florida decorating trends, things that those people don't know. Uh -huh. Now, granted, I don't like talking about Florida decorating trends, but <clears throat> my wife knows that stuff. She wrote me the script. I should have just had her do the damn video. Um, and it's... It would have gotten more views, I'm sure. Well, yeah, well, you know, I did all right. I did all right. They probably saw me and said, well, shit, if this guy's going to talk about decorating, I might as well listen. I might have something good to say. Um, but I started seeing our, uh, our click rates and our open rates like dramatically increase. Yeah. We were at over 30% on great. our open rates, yeah. which is unreal. Yeah, for a database, that's good. Yeah, well, and like you were saying before, you get all this stuff like, hey, Super Bowl uh, appetizers and how to bake a pumpkin pie. Yeah. Like these are the drips. I hate drips. Yeah. I hate drips. Drips, people don't want to be dripped. What do people say? They say, take me off your list. I don't want to be on your list. Well, you're not, no, 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 you're not on my list. I just regularly provide weekly value added content that you get through your email. Right. And then you can syndicate and take that content everywhere else on all your other social media platforms if it's organized enough. But yeah, we take, we take the, uh, the, the problems and things people want to hear about and then also incorporate the things that are local and then we put out two minute videos about that. Who doesn't want to watch a two minute video that's relevant, entertaining. Absolutely, yeah, that's right? what you want to do, for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, so where do you find a lot of your content? Um, well, it, there, uh, obviously it's the things that happen to you, but there are different types of content to create. So, um, blogs got to be a big thing probably five to 10 years ago. Well, what we've seen now are these kind of micro blogs that you end up putting on LinkedIn and Facebook or sending out to your database. So micro blogs are great about those situations that happen to you on a daily basis. Hey, here's what happened, here's my thoughts on it. Um, videos, obviously. Ebooks have gotten so easy to write, to come up with content. I can speak into my phone all of the ideas that I have over a two week time period. Mm -hmm. I can then send that to someone to transcribe and someone put that together. I can have it printed and sent out in this thin little ebook uh, for eight bucks a pop. Um, the same thing like what you talked about when you do research on, um, like everybody watching this video right now can have a piece of content created for them by tomorrow with a lot of the stuff that's out there. It could be the three things to ask uh, your agent before you hire them or the, before you list your home. Any, anything like numbers, people like that. But that's a piece of content and just go. Like if I asked you, what are the three things you should ask a realtor before listing your home? Like what would you, the realtor, say you should ask? Yeah. That's your content. Yeah. Create it. Send that to Fiverr, someone like that. They can create this neat little 
um, flyer for you and you've got a piece of content. So those types of flyers, those types of eBooks, uh, videos are huge. Video marketing um, is huge. That's where everybody is going. People love to hear stories. So when, when people begin to ask, okay, well, I understand videos, mm -hmm. but like I still like, I'm still stuck. Like I get, I need to do videos. Um, there are different types of videos that, that realtors who are not well versed in videos can step into to make them a little bit more comfortable. Interview videos. Mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. I don't know about videos. I can sit with you. Let's say Jay Barabee, uh, your coaching business has nothing to do with real estate, but I'm a realtor and I'm going to interview you. You know, why did you get into coaching? What have you seen? What are some of the challenges? Uh, what are you doing in stuff? Like As a realtor, I can do that with a local business owner. Yeah, I can get. I can provide value. Like if and if I've got an honest, yeah, yeah, if I've got an audience and I'm putting it out on social media, I can sit with a local business owner. I'm providing value to that local business owner because I'm getting their message out. Yeah, and I feel more comfortable on video because I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I don't, I'm not like I'm not the performer. I'm just asking questions. So, interview videos are great for a real estate agent because it begins to solidify them as the expert. They're around town, and as a real estate agent, who wouldn't want to connect with other local business owners? Mm -hmm. That's a huge referral source. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I didn't even think about that double whammy. Yeah, it absolutely is. So interview videos, um, local business reviews. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, to, to have real estate agents do their monthly market update video. Right mm -hmm. Again, not going into detail about stats or things like that. But hey, we're seeing inventory up. We're seeing stuff, you know, we're seeing like, like you know, price reductions by the hundreds every day. Sharing that at a local place of business as you're sitting there, oh, and I'm about to get into this hot Italian sub. If you haven't, <laughs> yeah. if you haven't, had, if you haven't yeah. been to wherever, stop by. Go to Capriati's yeah, for the Thanksgiving yeah, day. Absolutely. Um, uh, so you're getting a couple of different things done there. You're yeah. giving your a market review. By the way, Capriati's owes me $500 yeah, for right. endorsement. Um, and, and you're providing value to that local business. So th those are great videos that you can do that don't have you kind of as the star. Yeah, and those market update videos, if you do those on your own, it's so easy for, when I do them, it's so easy to pull two or three stats. You pull the same stats from the year prior, uh, and there's so many different types of numbers that you can put, but people wanna see also that proofing. Right. You know, they, they, wanna, they wanna make sure that this is all relevant, it, especially if, if anybody, there's people in your audience that don't necessarily trust you yet. Correct. And this also develops trust. It's what we call social proofing. Mm -hmm. But when you have that information and then you can put that out in a video, it's, you're, you're saying, hey, look, I'm the market, without saying it, you're saying, I'm the market expert, I know my shit, and this is why you should watch this. Right. You know, and Absolutely. then they're going to keep tuning in for that because you are the authority. Which is essentially like what you're saying with the, the neighborhoods and the, um, the going into the local businesses, mm -hmm. but also being the mayor of your community. Absolutely. But like that's the authority. That's the person that knows what's going on. And who do you think they're going to ask or where do you think they're going to go when they want to know what's the best newest restaurant around too? Yeah. Because everybody's different. The way that they like to put out things. Everybody has their own passions, you know? And as long as it's relevant to your audience, that's what's important. And you hit on a great message right there, the mayor of your area. Uh, this is another easy piece of content. Most real estate agents already have an area they want to farm. Mm -hmm. They know the neighborhoods they want to own, they want to do business in. So that's going to be easy for them to talk about because they already know it. They, they know what's going on in the neighborhood. So to step out and to be the expert of Indigo Lakes, you know, I'm here in Indigo Lakes today, quick little video out front what we're seeing the last 30 days, here's what's going on, S be that expert. And what you do with that, you share that on social media, you also upload that to your YouTube page with keywords, because where do we know most people start their internet search is on Google, and when you type it into Google, um, if you've got the right keywords in there and you've got seven um, neighborhood videos done, the chances of that popping up on the first page is one of the first videos is gonna be um, extremely high so like that's an easy piece of content for you to create is a neighborhood you already know about go out and just look into the camera and just talk about what you already know about the neighborhood and why you're passionate about it because the people living in that neighborhood they want to see someone that is all in with that neighborhood that loves it as much as they do because that's where the passion is going to come out and that's where your ability 
uh, to sell and to sell that property. They're gonna they're gonna believe it. Amen, dude. When I talk about something that I'm not passionate about, you can tell. Mm -hmm. You know, it sucks. But then when you start getting fired up just about something that you're you know really is you know passionate about like something that you know, that's in your will like when i start talking about you know me prospecting yeah right right for um for sale by owners expired cancels how to sell those people or or convert them mm -hmm. and how to increase those conversion ratios and then how to take those appointments and how to build that trust and rapport and how to serve them like that speci those specific pieces it's natural for you yeah, and it fires me up beyond belief, and I and you, you can't shut me up about it. Right. You know. Um, so what happens is, is when you're not that way, mm -hmm. you begin to try to convince someone of something. Yes, yes. And when you try to con when I try to convince yeah. you, as opposed to my my true passion about what coming out of me, it's a totally different sell. Yeah. No, that's totally agree, and that's one of that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest mistakes that you guys make is that when you're talking to a prospective client, you just start telling them all the great things about you. So I'll ask a lot of agents, I'll say, what makes you different? And they'll say, well, you know, uh, I market this way and uh, I sold this many homes last year. I'm like, no, that doesn't make you different. I'm like, because that's what everybody says. And then what does the client think? What does the average consumer think? And I'll tell you what they think. Now, if you can't tell, I just got super fired up yeah. because I'm passionate about this. Right. But I'll tell you what the clients think. They think, well, all realtors are the same. And then you might hate me for saying that, but guess what? I'm just saying what they're thinking. All realtors are the same. What do you do different? Now, if you hadn't heard a client say that before, you're not doing business. Right. What makes you different, right? You know, all realtors are the same. You have to be different. And then that blah stuff that you're saying, right? Or just trying to like prove yourself. You don't have to do it. You can do that. And I'm sorry to take your thunder here, but no, you're, you're I, absolutely right. I love this. This is good content. I, I want to get, I want to get on this. It was good content, right? <laughs> you know, but, but I want to get on this to when, when you're talking to, uh, when you're talking to a prospect and instilling the, the, and this is sales. This is what sale, this is the sales part that most most agents don't understand because they haven't been taught. But it's talking to the prospect and instilling the ideas in their mind without coming across as if you're even saying them. Bingo. Yeah. What, so here's one example. When I'm talking to an expired listing or when I'm talking to anybody, if, if I want to show them that I sold a lot of homes and I have the experience, then I will throw in somewhere in the conversation very briefly before they bring it up. Like if I can sense, because I know I've trained myself and I've, and I've been trained to understand if in that conversation, if that's something that, that might come up, then I'll address that ahead of time and I'll say, yeah, you know what? I totally agree with you on that. Out of the 85 homes I sold last year, most of them are just like you. So what I'm doing right there, just by saying that, okay, and you should write that shit down if you didn't already. That's good. Rewind it, write it. it down. But what I'm doing right there is I'm showing them, hey, I sell a lot of homes without me selling a lot, without me telling them that I sell a lot of homes, like by bragging, you know, but I'm, I'm doing it in a way to where I'm making them feel also that they're not alone. Right. Everybody likes to be part of a group. Everybody wants to be associated, you know, churches, right? Yep. Military, okay, these all have a higher purpose, yes, we know this, but... Mastermind groups, everybody wants to... Yes, everybody wants to be part of that. So when you know, like, oh my God, I'm not crazy, like this, I'm just like other people, it's such a huge benefit for people emotionally. So, yeah, I just had to go off on that, man. No, oh, absolutely, and I love that, and that, that again, that's part of um, knowing what you're talking about and having that passion come out without actually trying to convince someone like you know most people sit down at that listing presentation and go through you know who i am all of this when that comes up conversationally it's a completely different delivery yeah absolutely so yeah if we could keep talking about that for days but let's get back to the content mm -hmm. so one thing that uh that i want you to talk about is the delivery methods and let me give a like a brief intro on that so the, uh, most people are nervous uh -huh. or scared 
to put out a video, right? I mean, you know, we all have these fears. Fear of public speaking is one of the biggest. And when you're publicly speaking to the entire world virtually, well, I mean, you can get a little nervous. Absolutely. Um, people think that they need to look a certain way or they need to do a certain thing. But if they're just, if you're just yourself and you put out short relative information, then what you do is you take that content and eventually, slowly, you start incorporating different social media channels that you get all of that stuff out to, then you will have a content ecosystem, mm -hmm. a content Correct. distribution ecosystem to where everybody looks at different channels. And uh, Insta stories, that's one person at a certain, like there's a specific type of person, a specific time of day, right? There's there's, there's ways people watch that TV, okay? The same thing with Facebook. Most people go on Facebook at a, a certain time of day, but it depends on age and demographics as well, right. okay? So understanding your audience, but you know, also uh, Snapchat, right? Are your, is your audience on Snapchat, right? Are they millennials or zennials, you know? Right. Um, and YouTube, right? YouTube is for watching videos, but podcasts is for listening to those. Correct. So, Anyway, without me saying all that, tell me your thoughts on what you do with uh, your distribution. Uh, as far as like when? Um, no, not even like that detail, but more so just um, you know how would you how would you so, start, so how would you have yeah your so start right so it? here well the, hopefully this answers your question if not we can I'll, I'll go back to it but sure, it's gonna most be people anyway. um, we talked about fear fear of public speaking. Yeah. So when you do Toastmasters, when you get up in front of uh, someone and you get nervous, typically you're nervous because you're not comfortable with the content, you're not comfortable with what you're about to say, and it's not coming from here, it's coming from here. So that's why it's so important to engage here. And so when I talk about content creation and how what you experience every day mm -hmm. is your content, it's as quickly as something happens to me. The thoughts are in my head, the emotions are still here, the passion is here, I get on, I flip open my camera, and I do a quick selfie video, and I share the story. Yeah. I'm intense, I'm passionate, I, I, I wanna get my point across, and I'm not trying to sell anything, I'm just telling a story. Those types of videos can get way more engagement than the perfect professional video with the lapel mic, the perfect hair, yeah. is the lighting okay, um, because a so lot of do well, that. Yeah, what, what happens do is um, people are worried about that. It's about the content. What are you yeah. saying? Not how professional a video is. And a lot of times with those professional videos, people's guard is up. What are you trying to convince me of? What are you trying to sell me? No. Exactly. With that you know, passion, it's... Everybody's being sold. Everybody's yeah. being sold. One, one of the big things going on in Facebook groups right now is limiting the people. There's actually a lawsuit... Um, not, I'm sorry, not a lawsuit. There's an ethics complaint filed against a specific Facebook group from another, this isn't real estate, mm -hmm. um, but, but it's in an, a related industry. Right. And, uh, and it's, it's another person in that industry filing an ethics complaint against uh, a woman's Facebook group in that industry because oh, right. they wouldn't let him in. Right. So... Again, you know, there's certain barriers that you want to have in these things, and this is stuff that's that's coming up even more. But in a, a because you're you're being sold things. Now that's right. not to say that you're being sold things in that group, but um, there's a lot of them wanting to leave out vendors because the you know or coaches because they don't want to be sold. And right. I don't blame I don't blame them. You know, we get so much content in front of us, so many ads. I mean, shit, man. You know, like I can tell you, every third uh, Facebook post that I scroll through is an ad. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because I understand it, but I also understand the fact that you can't shove these, that you can't shove information down right. people's throat and continuously try to sell them. Yeah, so that that's one of the reasons social media allows you to tell your story in that kind of not in your face trying to sell you way, right? Your your personal Instagram, your personal Facebook page organically, not your business page where you're running those ads, but every day through those social media outlets, you're just telling your story. Uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. It's important to come uh, from that place and those short selfie videos where you're sharing what's going on through your day in your car as you're walking, as you're you're you know you're you just finished your workout, as you just finished your morning study or your devotional. What did you get from that? 
that is what um, is going to connect you with that audience because most people are 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 incredible. Like as human beings, we are incredible people. Yeah. And um, if I knew more about you, I would want to connect with you. Well, so how are you going to get that information out? Well, you just got to start creating the content. You've just got to start putting it out there and making it vulnerable. One of the things that really stops people is that fear of what other people are going to say or think. Mm -hmm. And you have to get rid of that. Like I, I would have never started doing videos and posting them on social media and sharing what I learned from my coaches if I cared what other people thought. Because I'm sure there's plenty of people that are connected with me on Facebook and other areas that say, who, who does this guy think he is? Like he, yeah. He's nothing special. What, like I don't want to hear another one of your whatevers. Like, and I'm okay with that. If you have you're to be going okay to, with that. If you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be seen by a lot of people, if you're going to be doing a lot of business, there's going to be people that don't like you and that you shouldn't be doing business with in the first place. Correct. You can look in your in your database, your Rolodex, right? Did I say Rolodex? You did. And, and, and you can probably take 20%, 10 or 20% of those and throw them out. But you just hit the key here. That's why you're creating the content. You're creating the content to push those people away from you. Yeah. Right? Because how many of you have had a real estate transaction where you, yeah, you made $7,000, but at the end of that transaction, you said that was not worth the commission. I just talked to uh, a coaching client last night. Yeah. That same thing. And, and same so thing as around. you put this content out, it's going to push people away. That's what you want it to do. Cause imagine you building this database and this business where you're doing business with like-minded people. They appreciate you for who you are and you, you're going to connect with them differently than you are some person that, that your content pushes them away. That's what it's there to do. You know why that fear is there? Because people are not, they don't feel like they have enough good leads coming in. Right. So we hold on to the bad leads and that's not something that we need to do. Those bad leads, those bad clients, they take away more. And you know what? And we all do it. Mm -hmm. We'll make that judgment call of, geez, should I work with that yeah. person? And you know in your gut you shouldn't work with them anyway, but you want the money. And you're like, well, you know, maybe it'll be an easy sale too. Uh, then all of a sudden, like this, <laughs> this girl last night, she's like, yeah, he keeps blowing up my phone and, you know, he's saying all these negative things to me. She's like, the, the emotion that I feel and the energy that it takes away from me besides all the time and everything else yeah. is just completely draining. And I'm spending 80% of my time with, you know, with this one guy that's, you know, producing just a small amount of my income. So energy vampires are real, right? I think yeah. it's the energy bus that talks about these energy vampires and, and we can't ignore that as a person. Uh, if, if it's something that drains me of energy, I need to protect myself from and yeah. stay away from yeah. And, and, and sometimes those are people and yeah. you need to stay away from those certain people. Sometimes those are clients. Sometimes uh, it's family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You have to, like, yep. as you, if as you grow. If anybody in my family's watching this video that I don't talk to. It's true though. Like yeah. as you grow a business, as a real estate, if you're, as you're growing your business, there are going to, like you, like if you're going to, if you're up to big things, mm -hmm. you're going to have to eliminate things and people from your life. Yeah. Because they're going to be there to keep you down. To hold you down. Yeah, for reals. Um, so yeah, so we syndicate, uh, we get it out in different channels. Yeah. We got time suckers. What do you want to say? Uh. You guys. So well, well, we. I, I wanted to say as we were getting towards the content and the timing of it. Uh, again, these little devices are perfect because if I've just put out a piece of content, mm -hmm. but like inspiration strikes me with something I've just heard or learned or experienced. Yeah. I still need to get that into a video or into my transcriber or write it down or journal. I've got a journal right here that I carry with me everywhere um, because I need to get it down because that's what I experience. So mine's, mine's, mine's bigger. It is. Yeah. Yours is more industrial. This is more kind of like hipster kind of like, I'm not that cool yet. Bound. I'm not that cool but, yet. But at least getting the content down, you don't have to share it right then. You can then be intentional with when you share that content. By the way, epitome, perfect hipster look, right? He's got the glasses, the buzz sides, he's got the beard. You got skinny jeans? Uh, I sometimes. I can't tell if they're skinny. Yeah. Yeah, plaid shirts. Today. No, I don't have. I don't have very many plaid shirts. I either have movement gear or I'm typically in a suit. Do you button all the way up to here? No. <laughs> only, only when I'm trying to be gangster. Um, 
Yeah, so shit. Oh yeah, recording it, recording it right when you get it. I get a lot of my inspiration first thing in the morning. And that's when, if I write it down and I don't record it or I don't put a meme together and yeah. then throw it on Insta right. stories or, or whatever, um, it's just, it's, it's a waste and I don't come back to it. And then I second guess myself later. But it's, but I'll tell you, if I get it out right then and there, it's perfect and it's just when it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, and it's authentic. What most people yeah. think marketing and content is, is what can I say that's going to, like what, what, what can I put out to the marketplace that's going to attract them? Mm -hmm. And I say no, like that, that's how you end up doing business with people you don't really like. Yeah. Like put out who you are, share the story of who you are. So that comes with a mix of, you gotta have business, but you also have to have that personal side. You have to share that stuff that's going on in your personal life. Um, if you have a lot of kids like me, there's uh, and, and and you've got some with some pretty big personalities. Oh shit! Yeah, he's got five kids. You've all you've always got great content to share on that on that personal side because I've got five kids. You've got some with big personalities. There's always stuff going. How did I forget <laughs> to tell people you had five kids? He's got five kids and he's got a twenty year old. Yeah, yeah, that's so, nuts. Um, yeah. Um, so that was really that was really the last piece that I have. It's 2019. Uh -huh. you, it's you raw real and be relevant like share if you've got tattoos if you've got like there's, there's no, you don't have to cover that stuff up anymore like no. who you are is what's going to attract yeah. your people your and, tribe and it's, and it's what's going to keep it's what's going to keep you differentiated from all of the mass media and the tech disruptors that are taking over mm -hmm. a large a large majority of the industry right which is something totally separate but let's give why don't we give three good actionable items because I know that everybody watching this is saying, well, shit, where do I start? You know, what are the first three things that I do that I can start putting out videos? What are the easiest things that I can do? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first is be intentional with your time, right? Um, don't just like initially schedule it in your day. Like put a time down, 9, 9 a.m., I'm going to step in front of my, my camera and I'm going to talk about this and then just start doing it. Uh, the fear comes from, and the great thing about doing that is I'm not telling you to put that content out, mm -hmm. but, but get the reps in. Yeah. Part yeah. of the fear is how I look on video, how I look on camera, get the reps in. Like I, I, I know when I first started, cause I, I first started stepping in front of the video camera in 2013. Um, it would sometimes take me two hours to get a 30 second video because I was so concerned with yes. that. So get the reps in, practice. Um, but my, my next step would be like to get a journal like this or to start recording your day, like what goes on throughout your day, getting it into that. Just, just follow it around almost like, um, like a video journal and then just keep that to yourself. You don't have to share it, but you did a good job of that. It's probably close to a year ago where you, when you started your like kind of daily video series, yeah, and it was uncomfortable for you, but you just got on there and you just went with it, and 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 it began to connect you. But you get better at it. You get a lot better as you practice. Yeah, it was a little spin on the um, the the thirty day challenge yeah. that that some people had on the on Facebook there for a while. Um, but yeah, what what I'm what I'm a big proponent of is like you said getting it out there and getting the reps in and mm -hmm. getting the practice in because my first video that i did was uh, like two and a half years ago and i know for a fact it was 88 takes 88 takes for a two minute video yeah. that i look at today and <laughs> sucks and you're like Man. it is so bad yeah and and i was i was soup Hi, stuffy, trying to recite the words that, that came across. Trying to be something that really wasn't. Trying to be something yeah. for somebody else that yeah. I shouldn't be working with in the first place if, it res if that video resonated with them. So essentially, everything that I was doing what, that took me so much time right. was counterproductive. Right. You know? So, so, uh, we've got, so we've got time. Schedule your video time. We've yeah. got journal. Like, put the content into something. What's the third one that... Yeah, well, the third one is, right? I mean, you're getting, you're getting the reps in. Mm -hmm. You're scheduling it in. You're writing it down in, in your journal. You're getting the reps in. So then the third piece is 
put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Put it out there and don't hesitate. Within a week of doing a little bit of practice, it doesn't matter if your video sucks. Okay. P people will pick up on that. As your videos get better, they'll be yes. like, oh wow, he's getting better. I like this. Every single person that I know that has put out videos consistently, everybody started somewhere and everybody started at the same place. Yeah. Nobody has that, uh, well, very, very few people have that electric personality that translates right over video and is mm -hmm. going to get right to their audience. Most people, just like everything else in business, you have to work at. Yeah. But at the same time, if you don't get started now and you overanalyze it, then you're going to be left behind. So yeah, that's, that's the third thing is get started. And, yeah. and something fun that I'll leave you with, I talked about it earlier, is take something vulnerable, take a, a personal story, something you've learned or something that happened to you, and insert that into your uh, database, your email. Like uh, if you have a drip campaign, stop it for one week and insert that personal story and you'll be able to tangibly see the response you get from that. Thanks for sharing. Wow, this was powerful. I appreciate, you know, this was really cool. I didn't know that about you. Insert something more personal into the content that you're already putting out to your database and I promise you, you'll see that click rate, that open rate, it's gonna go up. Yeah, for sure. Hey dude, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge on, on all of this stuff. Uh, it's so important and timely, uh, timely topic. Yeah. But um, if people want to get in touch with you and then also give a little plug about Movement Mortgage because people need to know. Yeah, sure. So I'm on Facebook. That's really a great, um, you know, Facebook these days. Uh, I'm probably answering Facebook messages quicker than email and text. So Jonathan Garrick, search for me on Facebook. I have a Jonathan Garrick leadership page and also my personal my personal page, uh, my cell phone, call me, let's, let's talk, let's mastermind, 239-877-2680. Uh, Movement Mortgage, um, I am the market leader from Sarasota down to uh, Marco Island. We're looking for good people, people who, who want to wake up. I was telling Jay this, that we've gotten to the point in our market after two and a half years where I really feel like my team wakes up every day and the first question they ask themselves is, who can I go make a difference for? How can I be a difference maker in this world? Not how many loans can I generate? Not how many deals can I do? Who can I go make a difference for? And when you wake up every day like that, the business, the results, they just follow because that's what you're connected to. So if you know somebody like that, if you know loan officers out there that, that wake up every day and ask themselves that, uh, I'd love to connect with them because we're doing some big things here in Southwest Florida. Yeah, dude. And that's one of the reasons why I resonate with you so much. I mean, on so many different levels, but Change Agent Radio, Change oh, yeah. Agent Evolution. I love that name. You know, agents that are, that, that are looking for more, you know, forward thinkers, yeah. industry leaders, and you're one of them. So I pre That means a lot coming from you, man. Thank you, brother. That means a lot. You're doing here. big things, and I'm, uh, I appreciate you stepping into to our office and uh, doing this with us. Cool. Yeah. Peace out, guys. Take it easy.